All right, now, starting with part B, it says determine the trigonometric ratio that you would use to solve for x in each triangle. Explain your reasoning. You do not need to solve for x. Okay, so for the first one, we have our reference angle over here. So it's the 35 degrees. And then we have the side x, which is all the way across from it. So if it's across, that's going to be our opposite. Okay, so that's the opposite side because it's across from our reference angle. It's all the way on the other side of our reference angle. Then we also have the eight, which is across from the right angle. And it's also the longest side of our triangle. So what side is that? Does anybody remember? Hypotenuse. Yeah, hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. Okay, so then I also want you to remember the so, Ka, Toa. Which one uses the O and the H? Is it so, the Ka, the Toa? Oh, so. I heard it. Yeah, so. Every time you guys said it, I interrupted you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so yeah, it's the so. So that means it's S for sine. So I'm going to write sine of 35 degrees is equal to the opposite, which was the X, over the hypotenuse, which was 8. So now we've just determined the trigonometric ratio that we would use to solve for x in each triangle. We determined it would be sine. And now we are going to explain our reasoning. And it's pretty straightforward. You just say we use sine because it uses opposite and hypotenuse. It's just like literally putting the Sokotoa reasoning into a sentence. So we use sine because it uses the opposite and the hypotenuse. I see someone has a question. I'm sorry, I didn't notice. Let me read it. Okay, it says, are you going to do the whole thing with us? Oh, I'll try. I'll be, I'll be watching the time just to make sure that you guys will still have time in class to do the Delta math afterwards but I'll try to do the whole thing. Okay, number two. Let's take a look at number two. We have this as our reference angle, the 40 degrees, and then we have two sides. So let's first figure out the seven. What is that seven? Opposite. Opposite, good, because it's all the way across from the 40 degrees. So this is our opposite. What about the X? Adjacent. Yeah, adjacent. Which is right next to the 40 degree angle. Good. So we have the opposite and adjacent. Which one uses opposite and adjacent? So Katoa. Toa. Toa. Toa, yeah. Toa has the O and the A. So it has the opposite and the adjacent. So I'm going to write tangent of 40 degrees is equal to the opposite, so the opposite was seven, over the adjacent, which was x. And then I write it in a sentence. We use tangent because <laughs> it uses opposite and a j, oops, that's so strange, adjacent. Sorry, I laughed because my handwriting looks so ugly right now. And I swear if we were in person, you would see my handwriting is actually pretty neat. <laughs> I think some of my students can confirm that because they were in my class last year. But my handwriting looks so ugly on the iPad. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways, we use tangent because it uses opposite and adjacent. OK, any questions on 1 and 2? All right, <laughs> let's keep going. If I go too fast, you can just let me know um, and then I'll slow down for you. Okay, I'll just, I'll leave it like that maybe so that we could do three and four. Okay, so let's do three. We have 
oops, we have this 45 degree angle as our reference angle, and we have uh, two sides given to us. So first, let's look at the x. The x is across from the right angle. What side would this be? Hypotenuse. Yeah, hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is across from the right angle and it's the longest side. What about this three radical two? Adjacent. Adjacent, good. Okay, so out of the Sokotoa, which I will write over here, I guess in purple, so it doesn't look so messy. Out of the Sokotoa, which one uses the A and the H for adjacent and hypotenuse? Ka, Ka yes. So cosine of 45 degrees is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent over hypotenuse. And then we write the sentence. We use cosine because, because what? It has hypotenuse and adjacent. Exactly. It has hypotenuse. and adjacent. Pretty straightforward, right? <laughs> Hopefully. Okay, I'll give you guys some time to write that because apparently I write fast or so I've heard. Okay, <laughs> let's take a look at the next one. We have the 60 degree angle right there. And we have two sides given to us. We have the 17, which is across from the right angle, which makes it the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. Good. Hypotenuse. Okay. And then we have the x, which is right next to the 60 degrees, which makes it adjacent. Adjacent. Good. And so once again, we are using adjacent and hypotenuse. Which one are, which Sokotoa thing is it? Uh. Ka, ah, good. Cosine of 60 degrees is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. All right, and then we write out our sentence. We use cosine because, because what? Because it has hypotenuse and adjacent. Yep, it has hypotenuse and adjacent. There we go. All right, I'll give you guys some time to write as I take a sip of water. Are there any questions on one, two, three, four? All right, let's do five, six. Okay. Oh my gosh, this is so tiny, <laughs> so squishy. Okay, so that's our reference angles, the 75 degrees. We have the side, I'm gonna use a different color now. Too much of one color, it looks too messy. Okay, so directly across from the 75 degrees is X, that makes this the? Opposite. Opposite. Opposite, good. And then we also have the side right next to it, which I'm trying to point at, but you can't really see. What is the 3.1? Adjacent. Adjacent, good. So which one uses opposite and adjacent? Toa. Toa, good. So I'm gonna write tangent 75 degrees is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So x over 3.1. And then we write out our sentence. We use tangent because, because what? It has opposite and adjacent. Yeah, it has opposite and adjacent. Good job. Okay, I'll give you guys some time to write. Okay. 
Okay, I just switched up the color for fun, just because I like colorful things. All right, so 17 is our last reference angle here. And then we have the side directly across from it. That makes it the opposite. Mm -hmm. Good. And then we also have the side X, which is across from the right angle, which makes it the hypotenuse. Yep, hypotenuse. Good. And so I'm going to write it out, or wait, before I write it out, we have the O and the H for opposite hypotenuse. Which one is this? So. Yep, so for sine, sine of 17 degrees is equal to the opposite. So 21 over the hypotenuse x. So sine of 17 is 21 over x. Now we write our sentence. We use sine because, oh my gosh, where did it go? Okay, there it is. We use sine because what? It has the opposite than hypotenuse. Exactly. It has opposite and hypotenuse. Good job. So we're halfway done with our extra credit. So hopefully everybody's getting this extra credit because that was the goal of us doing it together. So good job. And thank you to all the participants. I like it. Okay, I don't know how much time to give for writing. So I'm gonna pause the video. All right, let's scroll down and then we have part C. So solve each problem, round your answer to the nearest hundredths. Okay, we're gonna need a calculator, but that's okay. I can switch back and forth with like Delta math later on um, on my iPad. So we're going to need to draw a triangle for this situation. So let's read the situation. You are standing 40 feet away from a building. Okay, let me draw myself. That's me. And I am standing 40 feet away. This is 40 feet away from this building. You don't really have to like give it much detail, but I'm just gonna draw a building. Okay, here's my building. Cool. The angle of elevation from the ground to the top of the building is 57 degrees. So here's the ground where I am. And to the top of the building, which is right there, this is 57 degrees. What is the height of the building? I'm just gonna call that X. So the height of the building is the length of, you know, the height of the building, the length of this blue side. So we drew the situation out and it turns into a triangle. And so with this triangle, we can solve for X, the height of the building. Before we do anything else, are there any questions about my drawing? Alrighty. <laughs> okay, so we have the reference angle is 57 degrees, and then we have x, which is directly across from it. That makes it the what side? Opposite. Opposite. Yes, opposite. And then we also have the side of the floor, which is 40 feet. What is that? Adjacent. Adjacent. Good. I know I just wrote on the next page, but yeah. Oh, and I forgot to draw here at the right angle. But yeah. Okay, so we have opposite and adjacent according to so -ka Toa. Which one uses opposite and adjacent? Toa. Toa. Good. So then we're going to use tangent. Tangent of 57 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is x, over the adjacent, which is 40. Now, in this situation, x is being divided by 40. So how do we get rid of dividing by 40? Um, you can switch it with 57. Um, wait. You this one's the multiplying one. Yeah, those are the two options, right? We either switch it with the tangent 57 or we multiply it. The one where you switch it is if x is on the bottom. But in this case, x is on the top. So in this case, we're going to multiply by 40. 
So then x being divided by 40 and multiplied by 40 can cancel out. You get x on the right side, and on the left side is just 40 times tangent 57. And I'm going to type that into delta mass calculator. So I'm going to leave this page for a second. Uh, delta math calculator. Just ignore the problem that's there. Okay. So we have 40 multiplied by tangent of 57. As you can see, it gives us 61.59. We're rounding this to the nearest hundredth. So we're going to use two decimal places. Um, looking after the nine is a four, so it's 0.594. Four is a small number, so we keep the nine as it is. So it's 61.59. Okay, so our answer is 61.59. I'm gonna write that out. So our opposite side, the height of the building is 61.59 feet. How did I know it was feet? Well, that's the unit they gave us. It's not inches, it's 61.59 feet. Okay, any questions on this first one? All right, <laughs> let's go on to number two. I'm just gonna little, draw a little dividing line here. Okay, so number two, I'm gonna draw a smaller picture because as you can see, I kind of ran out of space on that first one. So let me do a better job. A surveyor is three miles from a mountain. Okay. Here's a surveyor, three miles from a mountain. This is three and I'm going to draw it like this. Okay, it's a very tall mountain. There's our mountain. <laughs> the angle of elevation from the ground to the top of the mountain is 15 degrees. What is the height of the mountain? I'm going to call that height x and I'm going to label it in blue again. This is the height of your mountain. And we once again have the ground length and the heights that we're looking for. So let's label them out. I'll use blue. X is across from 15. That makes it the what side? Opposite. Good. Opposite. I'll just use OPP. And then we have the three, which is right next to the 15 degrees. That is the adjacent. Adjacent. I'll just use ADJ. And which one uses opposite and adjacent? Toa. 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 Good. So I'm going to write tangent of 15 degrees is equal to the opposite, so x, over the adjacent, so 3. And then what do we do here? Multiply. Yeah, multiply by 3. Then the divided in 3 and the multiplied by 3 cancel out. We just get x over here, and we get 3 times tangent of 15 degrees. Okay, I know some people still are going to want to look at this, but we will come back to it. I just want to type this in a calculator. So 3 tangent 15. Oops, okay. 3 tangent 15. And that gives us um 0 0.803 remember we want to the nearest hundredth so that means we want two decimal numbers so look at the 803 three is small which means we keep the zero so it's 0 0.80 0 0.80 let me zoom in just in case you couldn't see we want two decimal spots so we're rounding it to 0 0.80 And then let's give it some units. So this is in miles. So it's 0 0.80 miles tall. That's, I don't know if that's a tall mountain. I mean, it's pretty tall. <laughs> that's a pretty tall mountain. Any questions on number two? All 
over here. Let me pause it. All right, number three, four, five, six. We're almost done. That means all of you can get some extra credit. So that makes me really happy. Okay, number three says, during the construction of a house, a six foot long board is used to support a wall. Okay, let me just draw this house. Okay, that's a house. A six foot long board is used to support a wall. So I think when you support a wall, it looks like that. And here's six feet. The board has an angle of elevation from the ground, here's the ground, to the wall of 67 degrees. And here's our right angle. How far is the base of the wall from the board? So here's the base of the wall from the board. So what is this side? Zoom in a little bit because I drew a very tiny picture and they gave me a very small amount of space. So here's my house. That is a long board, not the kind that you ride, not like a skateboard, but it's a long board that we use to prop up the wall. It's six feet long. And then, yeah. Okay, so let's label out what is the six feet? It is across from the right angle. Opposite. Wait, across from the right angle. Hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. I know it's kind of tricky, right? The other two were like the same, and then this one's slightly different. Hypotenuse. I don't know why I wrote the whole thing out. I could have just written HYP. Okay. And then we have from the 67 degrees, we have the side X, which is adjacent. Yes. Adjacent. So according to so ka. Toa, which one uses adjacent and hypotenuse? Uh, uh, ka. Good. So cosine of 67 degrees is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So x over 6. Now that we have x divided by 6, what do we do from here? Multiply 6. Yes, multiply by 6. Then the divide by 6 and the multiply by 6 cancel out. We'll get 6 times cosine. 67 degrees equals x. And I have to go type this into a calculator. I know some of you still want to see this, but I will come back to it. Uh, let's type 6 cosine 67 into our calculator. 6 cosine 67. Okay, and then that gives us 2.344. 386, but we want it to the nearest hundredth, so we want two decimal places. So this would be 2.34, because the four after the four is a small number, so it's 2.34. Okay, and it's what units are we using? Are we using inches, miles, feet? What unit do they give us? Foot. Foot, yeah, so it's feet. So 2.34 feet. How far is the base of the wall for the board? 2.34 feet. Any questions on this one? All right, number four. Museums use metal rods to position the bones of dinosaurs. If an angled rod needs to be placed 1.3 meters away from a bone. Okay. So I'm just gonna draw a bone. Does that look like a bone? Kind of looks like a bone, right? Okay. <laughs> an angled rod needs to be placed 1.3 meters away from the bone. Here's a right triangle, 1.3 meters, with an angle of elevation from the ground of 51 degrees. What must the length of a rod be? So the length of the rod is this, this, this is my rod. And I'm going to call that X. All right, so let's label our size. We have the 51 degrees over here. What is the 1.3? Adjacent. Good. What about the x? 
Hey, pot dudes. Hey. Which one uses adjacent and hypotenuse? Ka. Ka. So cosine of 51 degrees is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Notice this time x is on the bottom. Okay, so x is on the bottom this time. So what can we do from for here? You can switch the x and 51. Yeah, we're gonna do the switching thing. So we're gonna switch the x and the cosine 51 degrees. So x is equal to 1.3 over cosine 51. That's what we're going to type onto the calculator. So I know some people are still gonna to wanna to see this and I'll give you more time later. I just wanna type in 1.3 divided by cosine 51. 1.3 divided by cosine 51. And I know I didn't type 1.3. So there we go. 1.3 divided by cosine 51. And that gives us 2.0657. We want two decimal places. So you look at the third one, that's a five. Five is big. So we're going to round the six up. This will be 2.07, 2 2.07. 2 okay, 2.07. 2.07 what? Inches, feet, miles? Is it meters? Yeah, meters. So the length of the rod is 2.07 meters. Okay. Okay, last two. Uh, number five says a factory conveyor has an angle of depression of 18 degrees and drops 10 feet. How long is the conveyor? Okay. I don't really know how to draw this, but it's an angle of depression. So it's going downwards by 18 degrees and drops 10 feet, okay? Oops, that is not a nice sharp triangle. <laughs> it drops 10 feet. So 18 degrees downwards and 10 feet downwards. How long is the conveyor? So the conveyor would be this thing. I want to do these word problems with you because sometimes the words are like, what does that even mean? What is a conveyor? What is all, the, what is all of this stuff? That's why I draw it with you. <laughs> okay, so now that it's drawn, we have to label them. What is, oops, what is the 10 feet? Opposite. Opposite. We just stay consistent with the colors. And what is the X? Adjacent. It's across from the right angle. Hypotenuse. Yeah. Hypotenuse. Okay, so then out of the Sokotoa, which one uses opposite and hypotenuse? So. So. So sine of 18 degrees is equal to the opposite 10 over the hypotenuse x. And x is on the bottom here. So what can we do? Switch it. Switch it. Good. So x is equal to 10 over, over sine of 18. And once again, I am going to go type this in. And I'll let you guys copy afterwards. So 10 over sine of 18. 10 over sine of 18. 10 over sine of 18. And it's 32.360. The zero is very tiny. <laughs> zero is nothing. So it's 32.36. 32.36. In case you couldn't see. 32.36. Okay, so we have 32.36, what is it? Inches, feet, miles, cats, feet. dogs, feet, yes. 
So that's how long our conveyor is, is 32.36 feet. I'm gonna pause here and let you guys, you know, ask questions or uh, copy. All right, on to the last one. A bicycle race organizer needs to put up barriers along a hill. The hill is 300 feet tall. Okay, hills are like not so steep, right? Okay. This is 300 feet. And the top makes an angle of depression of 26 degrees. Wait, I think that means here on the top. 26, that's not drawn to scale. It makes me so uh, bothered, but it's okay. <laughs> here you go, 26 degrees. And then how long does the barrier need to be? That's strange. Where would you put the barrier? Would the barrier just be... Oh, I think the barrier would be... Um, like here, maybe they're just like blocking off that, I assume. <laughs> See, sometimes these word problems are weird, right? Because I assume you wouldn't just block off this section. If you just block off this section, then all of this part is just open. So I think the barrier has to be the, that tall, that top section that I just put in blue here. So I believe this is the barrier, I think. Okay, <laughs> so we're just gonna go off of this. This is your X. Observe the barrier. <laughs> yes. Okay, so that's the X. Um, we have a right angle right over here. Okay, let's first look at the 300 feet. What is the 300 feet? Adjacent. Adjacent. And then what about the X? Hypotenuse. Good. And then which one uses hypo uh, adjacent and hypotenuse? Yes, ka. So we have cosine of, I was going to write 46. That says 26. Cosine of 26 is equal to adjacent over the hypotenuse. And once again, x is on the bottom. So what do we do? To switch. Multiply. Switch. Multiplying is when x is on the top. Yeah, I know there's like two different types, right? And it's a little confusing. But yeah, when x is on the bottom, you do the switching thing. So x is equal to 300 divided by cosine of 26. And of course, I know people want to be writing this, but I'm going to go type this in onto the calculator. 300 over cosine 26. And then we get. Miss JD put 30 instead of 300. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. 300 over cosine 26, not 30. And then let's look at the number that gives us 333.780. We round two decimal numbers. What would this round to? Three hundred thirty-three point seven eight. Yeah, eight because the zero is so small, so we keep the eight as is. Three 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 point seven eight. Oops, there we go. Okay, so three hundred thirty-three point seven eight inches, feet, miles, cats, dogs, pigs. Unicorns, clouds, feet. feet. <laughs> Good, thank you. Yeah, and that's it. So this one's for number six. And you guys can turn this in for extra credit. If you missed the video, let me stop the recording first. If you missed it, you can watch it on the website.